professional way to do this kind of a building project down here. And uh, tra-la, you know, we have the whole project done, uh, the roof on it, the insulation, the plumbing, the wiring, uh, in a matter of nine calendar days. Oh, my gosh. And I did the wiring. Um, I had I had my brother-in-law uh, punch the holes through the studs and, and do the crawl up in the ceiling stuff while I was doing the outlets and the and the switches and so forth. Uh, the guys that were helping me through the, uh, the plumbing in, uh, we put in a separate uh, septic system for this addition. So we, we put in a septic system. And at the end of the day, you know, nine days later and about eight grand in parts, uh, we have this whole additional living space with shower, hot water, toilet, uh, hot water tank, uh, cabled to watch the free-to-air TV, uh, air condition, double glazed windows, insulated, um, perfectly weather stripped door, uh, you know, and, and, and it was just like no big deal. That but, is awesome. And, and, and the thing about it is in Texas, that's okay because we're not possessed by building departments. Yes. Now, which is, yes, the thing is well built. Yes, it would pass code. But it would it would involve sixteen architects uh, and readings from the Old Testament in order to get the thing approved. <laughs> yes, and and down here, you know, farmers work really hard, and it's a lot of work, uh, especially when it's ninety five degrees outside to be running around, you know, stretching fence and rounding goats up, and and so that's that's the good part about Texas. And this part of Texas is 525 miles. I mean, we're we're further from the oil mess here than Miami is, and the and the winds here predominantly come from down toward Mexico, and so they sweep up to the northeast. So we're not as likely to get you know the killer rains as parts of oh, Alabama and so forth. And there's a part in the linguistics that's really scary. Um, because one of my friends read the report from Cliff where it talks about a, a city being essentially being gassed by hydrogen sulfide and other uh, chemicals off the Gulf. And, uh, and and he said, he called me up somewhat freaked. He said, you know, my God, that's a perfect description of Birmingham, Alabama. And I said, well, I don't really think that it's going to go that far. But, uh, you know, uh, just something to keep in mind is is that we really could have more than just the uh, uh, the pittance of response we've had so far we may have to actually get serious about it and and there's a there's a video going around by a young woman who lived real close to spill zero and she was on PBS the other night and just talking about how uh, basically, the oil companies are doing uh, ponies and balloons, uh, which means basically whenever a public official or anybody with a camera shows up, everybody goes out and pretends they're working really hard, and the minute they leave, it's like, okay, everybody, back over here, <laughs> relax, off the clock. And and so, you know, and, and you saw where the, the federal government stopped the berming, the dredging that was being done to try and keep the oil out of some sensitive estuaries. It's like, hello, does the right hand even know the left hand? Can we make introductions? Oh. No, everything would run so much better if it was patterned or done as you and Elaine do your cooking and prep of the food. Oh, it's, you read that? Oh, of course. Yeah, we have a great time in the kitchen. Uh, she goes, oh, I see you're here, here to take over. And I go, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and she said, "No, I have this going, this going, and this going, and, and, and we have a great time." The the thing uh, that was one of the things in today's column was this million dollar idea I had because our we have a oh you know, we so agree with you I mean, on that. Is that such crap that manufacturers can't make a beeper for a microwave or a stove that is a little more subtle than this? You know, it's, it's, it's like the ground power unit on the jet that goes beep, beep. <laughs> you know, I, I want to get the block out and fix it. But my wife goes, no, 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 that's a new stove. Don't shoot my stove. I mean, well, 
I, I'm serious. I mean, I'm to the point now where I'm about to take the microwave apart, find that damn 38 cent squealer part, you know, and that's all that stuff costs. It costs nothing, you know, for them to put in a little quieter part, or God forbid, put in two parts and make it computer selectable. Get a little pleasant ding <laughs> instead of. <laughs> Uh, it just makes me cranky. <laughs> and I mean real cranky. Oh, we can tell. Grouchy, grouchy, cranky. That is a big <laughs> issue. Can you say something? <laughs> you talking to me? Oh, just thinking about it. Ruined my mood. Sorry. You asked earlier on break, what would cheer me up, right? Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> You're afraid of my answer, right? <laughs> I no. told her, I said, you know, cheer me up. Well, okay, how about uh, an ounce of weed, a six-pack of beer, and a couple of winning lottery tickets? <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> and, un- un- for- unfortunately, this is Texas, and I think uh, anything fun here has been outlawed. <laughs> but at least we don't have billing departments. So I guess, you know, if you want to smoke weed, you go to Oregon. If you want to, if you want to be able to build that property, you go to Texas. I keep looking for the ideal state, and I think it's Alaska. The only problem there is nobody figured out where the heat switch is. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, we, okay. we actually think we found the ideal in the current reality. The, where? The ideal here. Washington State? Oh, yes. yeah. Have you guys have you guys looked at your state budget ever? Oh, I'm I I said in the current reality it, that is nothing oh. to do with it. Oh, okay. It's, so when until. that just gets pushed or disappears, this is awesome. The air is awesome, and I'll tell you one thing: you probably know, but <laughs> what don't you anyway? Uh, you one Yale, thing you? that was delightful here is. We're in Thurston County, and... In which county? Thurston. Oh, okay, yeah, you're down by Olympia. Right. Anyway, whatever that is. Olympia, come on, I'm just... <laughs> I put the, the wrong emphasis on the wrong color. I know, Olympia, yeah. It, Olympia. It, next to Pulley oh, Up. That's right. the one. You're getting in the spirit of it now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But like, it was delightful because I called. There's, we've got just a lot of forest down there, and I called the sheriff's uh, office to find out about shooting. And it was, oh, that's fine. You have a safe place. You're you're there. Yeah, okay, all right. Just not, not after ten o'clock. At p.m. Yeah. You're cool. Yeah, down here it's really nice, too, for shooting. But it's we... not in Oregon. What? Not in Oregon. Yeah, Washington's an open carry state. No. Yeah, yeah. we didn't know that for months, and then we knew it. There we go. Cause so if I got a place up around Winthrop or Twisp up in there, I could walk around with my Glock on one hip, my Ruger on the other, and my AK? Yeah. yeah. You know, there's we we also. It wouldn't look very friendly, I suppose. We also found <laughs> out in Seattle there's a restaurant where if you come in carrying open carry, you get a discount on your dinner. Yeah. Oh, what? We've is never this been thing? there, but that is just we such a go. cool story. But it is advised to get the CPL, so yeah. that because then you don't have to worry about the laws here and there and oh, wherever. As you're going what, do you, what is a PCL? The, 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 the concealed, concealed weapon. Oh, 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 we call them CC. Uh, I know. C, yeah, everybody's got young. You've con- got handgun C-W-P thing over there instead C-W-P. of pistol. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's concealed yeah. pistol here. But, you know, the problem I have with that, seeing as this is Texas and seeing as I almost never get off the property, and if I do, um, uh, it's usually to go to Texas. Did I tell you I sold the Porsche, by the way? No. Well, this is see, you guys don't understand. When the linguistics talk about the whole country needing to be ready to go mobile nomadic, yeah. the only way you can do that is by detaching your stuff from a whole bunch of physical stuff. Right. And there's a lot of people that are just taking off and doing that. Um, Catherine Austin Fitz, for example, is about to go mobile. Uh, she, she has a uh, website called Solari.com, and she's a former... You know, I think she was with the Reagan administration. Very nice 
wonderful writer, very smart financially, and and she's basically unplugging from a homestead she built in Tennessee. So it, I, it, I'm not sure if it's something in the air, but there's something that's calling to a lot of us to get mobile. And this weekend in PeopleNomics, uh, the weekly report on PeopleNomics Sunday will be about constructing a diaspora bug out vehicle as the second part of the diaspora handbook. And uh, I've got a friend of mine in Miami, well, Miami area, who's got a BMW X5, and he said, okay, I'm looking at diaspora here. I need to get back to my office in Chicago. How am I going to do it if I'm competing with 7 million people? And I said, look, Doc, how come you're still there? And he said, well, uh, my lease isn't up. And I said, screw the lease. You want to you want to get to Chicago with no hassle? Go now. You want to go to Chicago and beat your way through three million other people trying to get off Florida? <laughs> you know, good luck. You 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 wait and you wait, and people can see the future. People can sense the future. They know the future, but because they're not empowered at a personal level to act proactively to get ahead of the problem. You know, they become victims of the future. Screw it. Our property's for sale. I sold the 930. Um, it doesn't mean we're moving. It just means we're getting light because non-attachment is the most important thing a person can have because if you are non-attached, you are really independent. And it's about personal independence, which is what UrbanSurvival.com and PeopleNomics are all about. That is oh, absolutely oh, beautiful. Perfect. That sounded like a commercial, didn't it? Well, no, but it sounds like a nugget that we'll put in the screen. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, how many, how many people... But you know what? Oh, no, you're saying we're out of time. Yes. We're also out of rosemary, oregano. I or know, but not curry. wine or beer. <laughs> oh, no. No. no and, uh, uh -uh. Never mind the other part. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was no. real That was a You can't even see that here without getting fined. without getting fined. George, Damn until very soon... <laughs> Okay. We love you, George. Thank you. <gasps> All right. And thanks for listening. To be honest.